Okay, let's take a look at example 3.1. We're asked to create a script named car loop that uses a for loop to run car update. Uh, so car update we had created back in chapter 2. Uh, so car loop we want to run car update 52 times. Uh, so essentially if you recall what car update did is we uh, assumed um, at the beginning of time we had 150 cars in Albany, 150 cars in Boston, and then car update simulated the movement of cars between Albany and Boston over the course of a week. So what we'd like to do with car loop is simulate the passage of cars over the course of an entire year. Okay? And so we'll be able to use a for loop to automate uh, repeatedly performing those calculations. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to take a second, I will pause this, go to MATLAB, uh, and we'll take a look at how to get this working. Okay, so now here I am back in MATLAB, um, and the first thing I'm going to want to do is go and copy um, my M file back from Chapter 2 car update uh, to my current path. Okay, uh, And so we're going to try and create a separate file call, called car loop, whose sole purpose is to loop and repeatedly uh, call car update. Uh, so kind of in the um, spirit of incremental development, since car update works and we know it's bug free, we don't want to touch it. Right? We're just going to add an extra part on top of that um, to perform the repeated calculation that we're looking for. So if you recall back to when we first talked about scripts, it's very important that the files that I want to run either need to be in one of MATLAB's predefined paths um, or needs to be in my current working directory. So my current working directory is within this subfolder uh, within Chapter 3, and at present there's just loop fun there uh, that we had just put together. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate back. So my 324 folder, I know I have a Chapter 2 folder, um, and so this is under you know, screencast and files, um, and here is car update. Okay. So I'm going to open up car update. And I want car update to be in this chapter 3 folder as I try and organize everything. So to get it there, um, I could always you know, copy and paste um, within my current folder. But here, I'm going to do a file save as. And I'm going to save this in chapter 3 screencast. Okay, and put it right there with loop fun. So if I go back and open up my chapter 3 folder, I have car update there. Excellent, All right? And I see the version that's currently open is the one that's stored in that Chapter 3 folder. Okay, so now we're good to go. And so um, I'm going to uh, try and not touch this file. I don't want to touch it because I know from our last exercise that that um, script worked. And so what I will instead do is I'll create a new script, okay? And we're told that we want to save this script uh, or call it uh, car loop. Okay. And so what we want to do in this loop um, is we want to simulate the passage of cars uh, for 150 or over the, the course of uh, 52 weeks and we're told to start with an initial population of cars in Albany and Boston of 150. Okay. Um, so um, let's you know add some documentation. Um, so this will be um, uh, simulate the passage of cars uh, between Albany and Boston ah, over the course of one year. And in parentheses, I'll put 52 weeks. Okay. So in terms of precondition, I'm actually going to put none. I'll predefine A and B um, within the script, and we could see how you could change that as well. And then post condition will be uh, A and B will contain uh, the number of cars in Albany and Boston, respectively. After 52 weeks. Okay. And I might try and indent that just to try and make it look uh, pretty. <laughs> okay. So um, 
if I go back to car update, so car update had this precondition of A and B in order to get it to run, and then it would model the passage of cars over the course of one week. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with, and I'll add a note, uh, start with 150 cars in Albany. Okay. By adding a note here too, if someone wanted to update the initial number of cars, uh, it's pretty clear in terms of um, where they would do that. So I'll assign a value of 150 to A, and I'll assign a value of 150 uh, to B as well. Okay. Okay. So the next simulate passage of cars uh, over one year, 52 weeks. Okay. And so remember, car update. Uh, models the passage over one week, and so we're going to loop over 52, 52 weeks. So the basic setup of our for loop will be four. Uh, I'll use i as an index variable, and i'll go from one to 52. And then what do I want to do each loop iteration? Each loop iteration, I want to call car update. Okay, and end. Okay, and so um, we'll run this in a second, but before we do, let's think about what it's going to do. Okay, so in car update, if I start with a value assigned to A and B, my precondition, initial number of cars in Albany and Boston at the beginning of the week, it'll calculate the number of cars in Albany and Boston at the end of that week. So in car loop, uh, first duration, I is going to be equal to 1. Okay, we don't actually use I um, in, you know, car update. It mostly just serves, or essentially just serves as a, a counter variable, right? It keeps track of what loop iteration I'm on, and we're telling it <clears throat> we want to loop 52 times. So first time through, I will be equal to 1. It'll run car update. So it'll take the initial values of A and B, and calculate the new values of A and B after the passage of that week. It'll then repeat. Uh, I will be equal to 2. It'll run car update now with the values of A and B from the previous uh, calculation and then continue to repeat until um, we reach that level where i is equal to 52. So if I give this a run, okay, to run it will just be car loop. Okay, and so if I run it, okay, let me scroll all the way up to the top here. Um, all right, so, you know, what you should see, let me move my little uh, face a little bit, okay. Uh, what we have going on here is, um, well, originally we started with A and B of 150, and then it calculates population after one week, and then it continues to repeat until we get all the way to week 52. Okay, and if you want to, you could try and make the output look a little more pretty, um, or make it look a little more intelligent. Um, ultimately, once we learn more about vectors, that'll greatly simplify the task, but we're not there yet. If I want to say keep track of what iteration it was, I could say just type i, and then the result will be i equals 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Or if I just want the number, I could use uh, display. So if I just wanted to do disp i, right, I can just display the value assigned to i in a given iteration. So now if I were to run this, okay, what I would get is going up to the top, okay, i is equal to 1, there's a population of cars after week 1, there's a population after week 2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the population after 52 weeks. If I wanted week 0, hey, I could do that too. Okay, I could even display as a string initial number of cars. Okay, cool. run it and now I even get the initial number. Okay, excellent. So if all I cared about were the final number of cars after 52 weeks, okay, I could do that too. Okay. So in the spirit of unit testing, um, one thing that I've seen students try uh, many times is 
If I look at car update, the issue is car update displays the value of A and B each iteration. And so remember, again, with the script, essentially when I call a script, it's as if I'm um, executing um, the program line by line as if I had typed in the command window. Or in this case, where I have a script calling another script, it's as if right here with car update, I were to copy and paste the contents of this file. Okay? And so the issue is in car update, we're not suppressing the output of the value of A and B after one week. Okay? Um, so something students often try and, and do is if I put a semicolon after car update, uh, thinking that, hey, maybe that'll suppress the output of the script. Okay? Uh, what you'll find is it doesn't quite work that way. Right? We still get you know, all of our output. And so if you only wanted the final value, you would actually have to go back to car update, silence the output of A and B there, and then if I just wanted the final value, right at the end, I could just type A and B, and it'll print the final values of A and B. Okay, so now if I run car update or car loop, it'll just display uh, the previous two values. Okay, and that's it for this example. Uh, and again, this is an excellent example of. Uh, within car update, I don't actually need to use i, uh, the index variable. The index variable uh, simply serves as a counter. Okay. Um, we'll, once we talk about vectors, we'll see how we can uh, clean up the display in this output uh, much more. Uh, but until then, uh, let's move on to the next example.